Hi, I'm Giga, and I just shit myself. Hi, I'm Quiet, and I've just been found in contempt of court. <laughs> you are half body. I, you, what, you thought I was lying? <laughs> Not that you were lying, it just... It's so jarring to see this so funny. Tell me something about yourself. Anything. I have severe issues with fears of jewelry. It's called cosmomophobia. Do you have any claustrophobia? Generally, I don't think anybody likes cramped spaces. Not really. Like, I spent a lot of my life in the closet, so I can't be that bad. I used to be, like, into hype stuff. Not great. Oh, no. <laughs> Me too. Something that I've always done hobby-wise is a lot of hiking. Hiking gear has a lot of crossover with tech wear. There's this like Venn diagram, right? And you have tech wear on the right side where it gets into fashion. And then you have hiking gear on the left side or like outdoorsy lifestyle kind of stuff. So anything that falls in the middle of that Venn diagram, I really like. I don't know about you, but I live in a city, in a dense city and everyone's trying to be fashionable. I was always in this environment where if I didn't try, I looked like shit. Especially with being on the internet a lot, I made a lot of friends that are from middle of nowhere, small towns and things. And if I would go hang out with them, I would walk around and everyone would be like, why are you so dressed up? And I was like, ah, ah, I just, this is normal. Like at that point, you're just the well-dressed person they're around. Keep at it enough and they'll fucking like, want to get in on it too. Yeah, trickle down fashion. Yeah. They <laughs> That's how it works. I will tell you for sure, none of them started dressing better. They were just, <laughs> they just looked at me and they were like, you look nice, that's good for you. I'm happy with just being told my outfit looks nice. I I'm mm -hmm. a simple man, I get a compliment, I preen for years. Right, you like lay in bed a month later and you think back to it and you're like, hey. How do you feel our external or IRL style has affected our online aesthetics? You literally owned a green hoodie. What is all this about owning one? Yeah, I'm a person. You don't. <laughs> okay, that's. That's true. fucked up. It's incredibly it's, fucking like yes, backwards. You're, you're a floating hoodie. What is it? Yeah. The 60s? Fucking Christ. <laughs> I look the same in every one of my videos. Honestly, one of the scariest things would be if you just like color swapped. Some people aren't even convinced I'm green. They just think like the hoodie's a really, really odd shade of brown or just like black at points. What if it's the thing like you're you're an eldritch being, right? And we cannot possibly, or almost like a biblically accurate angel, but we cannot. I've been advised not to speak on this topic. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, for, for safety reasons, we will not go into this topic deeper. Safety wow. secondary, it's mostly the branding. I like this question. What was the weirdest outfit you've ever been forced to wear? Uh, mm. I don't know, like hoodie mask and glasses? Yeah, that's kind of weird. Dude, I used to never get sick the past like five years. I think it's because I started staying in more. I was working from home more. My immune system is just not what it was, not at all. And I just die. Start huffing gaseous arsenic. It does wonders for the mucus lining. Honestly, yeah, I think I, think I should. Maybe my mucus is just too weak. Like you just got to start going down the periodic table, inhaling whatever the gaseous version of that is and something might yeah. work for you eventually you might die but yeah but um, at least you know my lungs will be prepared for anything else that yeah. could enter sure you know you're paralyzed from the neck down now but like whatever but not get sick yeah but i can't get the flu so like <laughs> check me can't get sick when you're this sick already have you ever heard of like the blood and semen supreme design i have you're like one of the only people i brought that up to who is aware of it <laughs> You know what I bring up to everyone? What? I can't stop mentioning Goatsy. Yeah, I, it's I, very common. I, I feel like that's like Goatsy is like just kind of part of the lexicon these days. Like it's well known enough, but I still haven't like seen the full video and I don't plan to in my day. Oh, I just know it through osmosis. It sounds like you've given this a lot of thought. That was very descriptive. Yes. I, I really don't miss like the shock image uh, era of the internet. When I see young adults on Twitter, like 18, 19, like what the fuck, gore warning. They're oh not desensitized God. to it. I'm like, earth is healing, you know? You know, you know like, yeah, I, I'm happy I, you didn't go through what I went through. It's better that way. I was so used to clicking on things and it was a legitimate 50-50 if it was a shock image or what it was labeled as. Oh, uh, I remember, all the time. dude, there's like a subreddit called 50-50 yep. and that's the whole yep. premise. That's quite literally what it was like on, on the old internet, you called? right? You just go in. Mm -hmm. You said quiet. I say that whenever somebody says quiet. <laughs> God damn it. Twitter has become significantly more like that in like the last year. Like, <gasps> yes. like trends, wonder, is it like shit that's- I don't know. I stay on the For You page for the most part, honestly. Yeah, no, the, the recommendation algo for the For You page is really, really tightened up. Like it's actually, for them, it's good. For Twitter, it's it's good. Yeah, it just keeps as, Yeah, hooked. as retention goes, like- was, I was in that horrible cycle of clicking onto Twitter, scrolling a bit, seeing nothing interesting, then clicking over to YouTube. Oh, I'll get back to this later. Then I would open like a, another tab of something else. And I, I was just doing that like three tab cycle all the time. And I, oh, 
I still want like my uh, phone in bed, but I, it's gotta be mm -hmm. like de-stressing, boring shit. It, it's just having Twitter on my phone outside of events, like where I need to DM folk. I throw mine across the room and then I have an iPad and I just use that for like mundane tasks. I don't have Discord on there either because while I do want to get back to people at a good time, I get engaged with conversations with people at like 2 a.m. The don't bring your work home version, don't bring right. your emails to the bed. I find the environment has the biggest effect on what I'm able to get done. I'm normally a streamer and I started working on videos and I'm starting to work on scripted content. Exciting. Stuff. I found that I could not sit at my desk and do it. So I have a chair, I have a spot that I sit in that is the like work chair. I do not do anything leisurely in there. I just bring a different device over there, sit in it, and suddenly I am able to write out and like script stuff. I can't, yeah, walks I just can't work for me elsewhere. too. Walks work for me yeah. too, as well as like shitting mm. or the shower. I have like a list for video ideas, but I also have a more fun one that's just like completely random thoughts. Would you like to hear some? Yeah, give me, give me what you got. Uh, someone, I'm gonna scream, me, me when I have no mouth. Pretty good. Okay. Y honestly, Laugh now. you can go off of that. <laughs> ah, good lord. Why do I have two million subs? I want to say like late last year, funny enough, we were, I was in like a call talking about icebergs and like we said iceberg, iceberg is a joke. And I'm like, that actually be like a decent video. There's a lot of information there. What if it was on an iceberg? And then I, at the time I was like, nah, that's like way too much effort. <laughs> It ended up happening. And then you actually flew out to an iceberg and filmed an iceberg iceberg video. Yeah, oh, dude, that <laughs> shit fucking ran my pockets. Oh my god. Yeah, so interesting. I want to go to Greenland. Greenland has like a really like robust local community. I just take an interest in everything, right? If if something is in front of me and I read a couple factoids about it, I'm probably about to get into a deep. There's like one guy in my chat who brought up cuttlefish, and I was like, cuttlefish? I know this about them, and he was like, well, I know this about them. And once I had like two or three facts in my head about cuttlefish i went and like looked on wikipedia three days later i just knew more way more than i ever thought i wanted to about cuttlefish right or even games that i've never played before if a friend has an interest in it and i know i'm not going to play it i'll go read through the wiki and i'll be like what's the plot let me read through the plot okay what are the endings what's the significance of the endings I, i'm like very avoidant of like media i haven't consumed yet like learning mm -hmm. a lot about the late stage i try not to get spoilers on it like i got mm -hmm. to play fucking undertale pretty much knowing nothing in that was like six years after it came out, actually. Wow, and you avoided spoilers for that long? Holy shit. Most recently, a game I played that is really happy to not know anything about it was Prey, the one from 2017. Oh, yes. It's so yep. good. It's really yep. good. I've never, like, played an immersive sim all the way through before, and that shit, like, had me going. The thing is, like, when it comes to playing games on stream, I'm really anal about the type of stuff I'll do. Yeah. Prey was an experience. I did not want to have to worry about babysitting chat while I was playing. There's right. just certain shit I have to, like, put limits on. Like, you will not catch me playing Ragnarok on stream first time through. <laughs> Right, right. Spider-Man exactly. 2, that's me time, baby. I have like mild regrets about some things that I've played on stream because then afterward I thought about it and I was like, I should have played this alone because my experience would have been so much better. My chat's really good at not spoiling things for oh, me. <laughs> that's fucking good for you, buddy. Good for you. It's, it's, dude, it's because I have the most intense mod team ever. And when I'm going to play something that is spoiler heavy and I'm like, hey, I heard that with this game, it's going to ruin game experience. Can you be vigilant? They all show up and they are just ready. My mod are like a secret police but with backseating like you get lasered on site yeah no i'm same same with mine some people get really upset they'll hint at something and they'll give the lightest lightest tip i have a tag on that says no backseating you know and uh and they get their message deleted and they'll be like what the fuck mods i wasn't even oh my god the, exactly amount, dude, the, the <gasps> amount of like uh ban appeals i've seen were like your mods are power <laughs> crazy and it's like them like i don't know saying like they'd fuck my like corpse or something they're just samps they're just white knights and I'm like, half of them are gay men or women. Like, what? <laughs> They're just following the rules, buddy. It's not my fault if someone doesn't read. <laughs> Sometimes I ban people asking as a bit, and then I just forget to unban <laughs> them. <laughs> like, fucking. <laughs> I try to not do that because I used to jokingly ban people all the time. And I, then yeah, I, would I don't do, the same do it these shit. days. I would forget. Sub 200 viewers, it was a lot easier. But like nowadays, I'm like, I don't want to accidentally like laser someone and forget about it. No, yeah, I, I did it a couple times. And then the mods would be like, hey, I checked this appeal and they didn't even do anything weird. What's up with this? And I'd be like, oh shit. And I would realize it's been a week, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> with my chat, I'm very not parasocial, but I'm very anti parasocial. And I have friends that, you know, as especially as streamers, it's different when you're mostly a streamer because you are genuinely spending time with these people very often. It's inherently more parasocial and I still hold my chat at arm's length because I'm just trying to make sure that the few people 
who are, I guess, more susceptible. I, I do whatever I can to keep them back because I don't want to be responsible for that. Yeah, but at the like, same time, we do. what like, can you do? I definitely relate to that a lot. I'm joking about like how my my viewers are not people. They are only dollar signs. But like <laughs> yeah, yeah, on yeah. stream, it's kind of impossible to do like three hours a week, three times a week and like not recognize some of the like returning people and like have yeah. some fun exchanges with them. You know, we, we all kind of try, like we try to make it very clear like where the boundary of it is. It's become a running joke that if people come in and they comment and they're like, oh my God, you're so cute. They would get zapped, nuked by my mods. Oh my God. The one, the one that I always do genuinely hate and get rid of is when they say mommy. No, I hate children. Because we zap those simple things, people don't come in and do the emotional stuff. You're doing some justice lord shit. You gotta like give someone a death penalty for littering so they don't <laughs> commit murder. There's some people, their attitude toward VTubing is they think you're hiding. Oh, you must be insecure, whatever. And I'm like, have you never played a video game, made a character and then made them gorgeous because you could? They never make like an average guy who looks like all right, but not that good. Like that's very rare. That VTuber has a feature that your real person doesn't. No shit, I made it up. I'm a half elf, half dragonborn, something, something, and I came from whatever. No one's like, I'm John, my stats are okay. No one, no one does that. <laughs> <laughs> what was being a VTuber like for you compared to the normal experience? For me, I was aware of VTubing tech and I went, I want to do that. Things finally come out that make it accessible. And I go, hell yeah, let's go. And I get a model and I just start streaming. I was not streaming before that. I was not in much of a content creator. That's it for you, especially with your community. What was, what was it like throwing a model yeah, on? So I, I definitely feel like uh, it's less different than people think. I started mm. streaming on Twitch, making second channel videos out of it with either right. no face cam, or I would like get in like the outfit, if you want to call it that. Right. Then I was originally just going to make a video on VTubers and I spent like 50 bucks on like that one 2D model. I started using it on stream, planning on only doing it for a week and then it stuck. As it grew, it just kind of became part of that, the second channel's identity. My audiences are a little more separated. A lot of folks find quote first. I feel like a lot of people that are VTubers themselves, they're very in this VTuber bubble. A lot of them don't really do a lot of content outside of kind of stuff they've already seen a lot of VTubers do. They have this impression, they as a VTuber cannot just do other content. They're like, oh, that's more of like a flesh streamer thing. I can't really do IRL content, but like there are ways to do literally all this. It's possible. Some people think of it as like a separate industry from content creation when like mm -hmm. they're like the same thing. One of my goals is really just kind of cross the beams a bit. A lot of my friends that I'm close with that I raid a lot are people that are not VTubers. Some of them have never touched VTubing. A lot of people that I watch have never touched it. And you know, so I'm trying to like, I'm trying to blend it. The argument you could make is that there's a certain audience of people People that's put off when like in thumbnails you use say VTuber models because they have a stigma of what that is in their head. But it's mm -hmm. also like, I don't think that's a barrier you can't cross either. There's been like a version of yeah. these character based creators uh, succeeding mm -hmm. in YouTube for a long time. So there's a lot to take away for from. Sure. Right. I think I think a good example of that in my head is even a uh, noodle because noodle draws himself and like he'll often like attach himself to a stick like a the piece fucking of paper cardboard, dude i love that yeah. shit actually in my mind the thing that separates average vtuber from the average creator that doesn't consider themselves a vtuber or isn't in that bubble most people that are very in the vtuber bubble and community do not do scripted content they do live stuff only they do you know improv and they're so streaming focused and i mean like a large part of youtube is like just straight up improv or like gameplay highlights mm -hmm. so it's not like that can't work yeah. it's just when you're streaming focused that takes up so much of your time that it's really hard to like learn youtube at the same time like yeah. you, you'll see like a lot Tell of streamers like some of the biggest guys like don't really manage their own youtube channels only one i can really think of is ludwig like he's very like right. in tune with like his live and his pre-recorded experiences it's hard <laughs> like i pick when i'm gonna stream mm. based off if it's I'm going to make a video out of it. Occasionally, I have a day where I'm like, I'm going to do this on stream with the intent of I would like to get a video out of this. I just want to do things more purposefully. I don't like only doing highlights like that is fun, too. There was a point where I recognized I was like, you know, this is going to be a lot of effort and it's going to be very annoying. It's going to be time consuming, but uh, it feels so much better. There's a satisfaction cycle that my brain likes. What is one of your favorite brands you've ever promoted in your career?
For me, it's Manscaped. There are over 9 million people using Manscaped right now. Manscaped has launched the new Lawnmower 5.0. It has interchangeable blades, better teeth on the razor, huge upgrades from the last 4.0. It's tough on hair, yet incredibly gentle on the skin. Manscaped is at the forefront, showing their ongoing dominance of providing top-notch quality and unmatched value as we jump into their latest grooming and hygiene bundle. Be sure to use my code so I can become the first VTuber with my own scented ball wipes. <laughs> Wait, actually, don't say scented. <laughs> Make sure you post in the tag hashtag Giga Shave My Life because I'd really, really just like to see if you bought it. I'd like to see how you like it. Leave your reviews. Let me know. Use code Giga at manscaped.com to get 20% off and free international shipping on all Manscaped products. Click the link in the description to check out Manscaped. Is that what you wanted, Seth? <laughs> I actually genuinely do love it. I, you know, something that I didn't get to do is I wanted to do a video where I and I wanted to do like a how to stream with Manscaped products. They're very easy to work with, I'll say. They are, and it let me do a lot of stuff on stream that was funny. They let me keep a line in a video once where I like said you could use the fucking other side of the razor as like a problem. Yeah. My favorite is, um, I had a tag that I was using. It was hashtag Giga shaved my life. Like streaming is like probably the closest thing that people our age will do that is like tuning into a show a certain time a week for like cable or some shit. Honestly, yeah, yeah. A lot of people back in the day watched a lot of the same shows. They talk the next day. Oh, I watched the episode of this and there would be a small sense of community. People yeah. don't do that now, right? They're just watching shit on HBO yeah. and Netflix and they kind of talk. Like even when streaming services do the weekly episodes, mm -hmm. people aren't sitting down to watch it all at the same time anymore. Mm -hmm. Whereas streams, you know, you want to catch that live. Yeah, and I enjoy that. I really like that people want to show up live, that they want to do community stuff together because then I was able to launch so much shit in my Discord that I wanted to do. We have a book club now. What? That's fucking yeah, sick. Yeah, and what? I was like, are people going to like the book club? Because I used to love book clubs. I read a lot and I was like, you know, is this like, are they going to be like, <laughs> ew? But they fucking love it. When I'm streaming, people show up for just chatting. When I get into the game, if it's a game that is really visually interesting, they stay. But if it's not as visually interesting, they don't as much. But if I'm talking a lot, if I know the game well and I'm talking a lot, they stay because I see it as just chatting with subway surfers on. My audience is a lot more like Five Nights at Freddy's than it is like Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of them, like the core will stick around like when I'm playing an FPS mm. that I play on my own time because they know that's when I'm like probably going to interact with chat the most. They don't give a fuck about Doom, but they just know that means I'll actually listen to them. Mm -hmm. Something that's very true is when chat recommends a game and they keep complaining over and over and over that they, they really want you to play this one thing. You have to play this and everyone's so excited people don't show up for those streams but then i sit there and i do fucking crossword puzzles on stream and everyone shows up and i'm like okay i do really like streaming mm -hmm. it's definitely different from youtube and there's like a lot more in the moment and stuff to enjoy yeah. but like i think youtube will always be king for me i really like doing produced content i was trying to come up with a name for a like late show and i said out loud i was talking to my brother and i went what if i did like late late geek geek <laughs> and he was like did you forget that you watch late late norm norm with me every day and i was like oh i think putting my name in everything is hilarious and my chat puts my name in everything because it's one of those things where when people hear it they're like what does this even mean they don't even realize it's a name you know they're like what is, what is that what, what is it and people keep using it as a verb they're like yeah i'm geek yeah, dead I, my gourd like, <laughs> right just geek so hard bro yeah 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 <laughs> off base assumptions someone's made about you. I'm like fairly proportional on camera. So like I look like a normal sized mm -hmm. person because I was not next to people in my videos. People thought I was tall as fuck, oh. but I'm 5'5". Five five. <laughs> I'm legitimately 4'10". Anyone who's taller than like 5'3", like- They all kind of blend together. <laughs> into ranges like 5'3 to 5'8 is all the same to me. And then 5'8 to like 6'4 is all the same to me, you know? Cause I'm just yeah, either I, looking I, up. I don't, obviously you have this way worse than mm. me, but I just have the misfortune of like all my friends, like hanging out with tall people generally. Yeah, yeah. Do you stand Man, back I'd... so that you don't have to crane your neck up? Cause I do that. <laughs> no, I think it's endearing <laughs> when they like see me look up. They're like, oh, he's so cute or whatever. You stand real close it, to them and you're just like this. They, they pay like more of my bills if I like take advantage of the poppy true. eyes or some shit. That is true. It's social engineering, all right? It's social engineering. One I've heard from a bunch of creators that have met me is that they always say to me, they thought I was going to be mean. They thought I was intimidating before talking to me and they thought it would be Can't hard to Can't confirm you were all those things. Oh, all right. Well, that, that ends fucked. the video, everyone. Thank <laughs> you. I'm a big <laughs> meanie.